welcome to my views and news uh, some new stories for you first one is from russia a coup in russia you can say a coup like situation in russia is unfolding putin just a few minutes ago delivered a speech he addressed the nation before that uh, wagner a fighter's chief uh yevgeny pigozin leveled serious allegations against uh, russian ministry of defense mr defense last night what happened after that after that fighting erupted in southern and western parts of russia between russian military and wagner fighters we have details for you of this situation Secondly, we also today Fano fighters uh, commemorated the death of uh, a general who was killed four years ago. A Semenyo Sege, uh, Amhara Regional Security Chief, was killed in 2019 after a coup attempt in the Amhara region. and today fano fighters local youth took out a rally in lali bela we have a video for you he is in uh, the uh, samena sege was buried in lali bela third viewers uh, a new story from amhara region of ethiopia where people are collecting money to pay ransom to ola fighters ola uh, ola fighters or kidnappers we don't know because uh, a few days ago uh, around 50 vehicle owners truck drivers were abducted in north shore zone of the oromia region and 50 million birds uh, ransom was demanded and lastly are erati refugees being relocated from addis ababa relocated to uh, amhara region or are they being sent back to erati videos pictures are being shared showing several buses carrying erati and refugees uh, taking them from addis ababa to an unknown location first of all it was february last year when russia invaded ukraine since then we have been seeing fighting on ukrainian territories eastern ukraine is uh, the zone which has border with russia where we have been seeing fighting though russia tried to capture capital ukraine capital kiev to it could not then russia focused its attention on eastern ukraine ukraine has also been hitting russian territories shelling conducted some don strikes but ukrainian troops are not on russian soil when fighting uh, broke out in february last year russia deployed its regular army and wagner fighters as well to fight in ukraine wagner is uh, a pmc private military uh, contractor uh, it's uh, a security company russia officially denies that uh, Wagner is uh, a Russia backed uh, armed group though we know that Wagner is based in several countries of the world wherever Russia does not want to show its military intervention it wants to intervene secretly it sends Wagner fighters Wagner fighters uh, fought in Libya when i covered Libya Libya war uh, we did several videos on that Wagner fighters are based in the Central African Republic to CAR. CAR shares border with Sudan. In some other African countries too there is presence of Wagner fighters. Wagner is led by uh, their chief uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin. There are around f- more than 50,000 Wagner fighters. So number could be around 1,000 I think. And uh, Wagner is directly uh answerable uh, to the president of russia putin wagner is not under russian ministry of defense like russian military is russian military under russian ministry of defense wagner answerable directly to president putin wagner was deployed to ukraine war uh, in bakhmut we saw that wagner fighters fought and 
when uh, Russians took control of uh, Bakhmut, it was mainly Wagner which uh, was leading the offensive on Bakhmut. Last night, uh, Wagner chief Prigozhin uh, said that uh, Russian Ministry of Defense, Russian Minister of Defense and uh, Chief of Staff, they have ordered a rocket attack, a missile attack on Wagner fighters in Ukraine. In that attack, large number of Wagner fighters was killed. So that is why Prigozhin last night announced to march for justice. He announced to move from Ukraine into Russia towards Moscow, Russian capital to capture Russian Minister of Defense and Russian Chief of Staff. And then Wagner fighters entered Russia from Ukraine. And they took control of the first city in southern Russia. Uh, its name is Rostov on Don. It is in Rostov uh, zone. And now Wagner fighters are trying to move towards uh, Voronezh. Voronezh is another a key city uh, in western Russia. These minutes, I'm recording the video, Russian uh, Air Force is conducting a strikes on a Wagner fighter positions in western and southern Russia. Near and in Voronezh, some strikes have been reported by Russian Air Force on Wagner fighter convoys, which are trying to take control of Voronezh. And from there, they want to march towards Moscow. Uh, and in Rostov, uh, on Don city, they took control of Russian southern military headquarters. Wagner fighters are armed. We know that they're armed with all types of modern arms. They have uh, tanks, artillery pieces, missiles, anti-aircraft missiles. So Wagner is a small scale full army, you can say. They don't have air power. They don't have aircraft, helicopters, etc. But on the ground, they have all the equipment which uh, militaries generally have. Putin, Russian president, a few minutes ago addressed the nation. He called the actions of Wagner chief treason rebellion he said people must not soldiers wagner fighters must not stand with uh, prigozhin and that prigozhin and others they'll be punished prigozhin was to capture sergey shoigo russian minister of defense so we can say an all out war is starting inside russia so far it is in southern russia Western Russia, which shares border with Ukraine. 300 miles away from Moscow, from Kremlin, a strikes are being conducted on Wagner fighters positions on Russian territory. Wagner fighters are calling it March for Justice. Their march from Ukraine into Russia, uh, into southern Russia towards uh, Kremlin. They're calling it March for Justice. It's definitely a coup because if Wagner wants to capture a Ministry of Defense, it means Wagner's are staging a coup. There is no doubt about that. So alarming developments, Russia, which was uh, trying to take control of uh, Ukraine, just trying to uh, capture Ukraine, is now fighting an internal uh, conflict. Ukrainian soldiers just enjoying uh, watching what is happening in Russia. We'll try to keep you updated so far. Three helicopters have been shot down over southern Russia. One over uh, Voronezh and uh, two in other areas. So Russian uh, helicopters, Russian drones, Russian uh, uh, bombers are trying to conduct air strikes 
on Wagner positions in southern and western parts of Russia. Meanwhile, Ramzan Kadyrov, Chechen fighters uh, had spoke. He announced his support for Putin, Russian president. Can we say Putin is in danger? I don't think so. Uh, Putin is in a strong position. Wagner is a small group. If you compare Wagner and Russian military, uh, Russian military uh, is a big force. But this development, this uh, confrontation between Wagner and Russian military will definitely hurt Russian operation in Ukraine. So, Russian prospects of uh, advance in Ukraine uh, will be seriously affected. And Ukraine can uh, take advantage of the situation to take back territories in Ukraine and move towards Russian territories. Alarming developments in Russia. Viewers. Second, viewers, second news story is about uh, a late Ethiopian general, uh, Assam Minusege, who was killed in 2019. Today, Fano fighters took out a rally, locals and Fano fighters, they took out a rally to commemorate the death of uh, General Asamenu Sege. The rally was held in Lalibala. Asamenu Sege was buried in Lalibala at a cemetery. Uh, the rally uh, ended and dozens of vehicles, bajards uh, and buses were part of this rally. Fano fighters, uh, they managed to take out a rally. They are uh, free to carry out their activities, by the way. They were in a city a few, uh, two to three days ago, in Vagaltana city, uh, marching with people there, and now taking a rally, taking out a rally in Lalibala. Assam Sege was head of Amhara Regional Forces. In 2019, a coup was staged against uh, Amhara regional uh, president, Ambachu McConnell. In that coup, Ambachu McConnell and uh, Ethiopian chief of staff, Sere McConnell, were killed. Asamenu Sege was accused of plotting the coup. He fled. Later, he was shot dead. Before that, he was accused of supporting another coup in 2009. Uh, he was accused of supporting uh, uh, a coup against the government in uh, 2009. Uh, he was put in prison. In 2018, he was released from prison. He was restored his ranks. In 2019, another coup uh, in Amhara region and he was then shot dead. Asamino Sege was the one who strengthened Fano. Shoa Fano, Gondar Fano were uh, strengthened during uh, Asamino Sege's uh, tenure. And he was the one who supported the formation of NAMA, National Movement of Amharas. Though NAMA later turned into a uh, junior partner of Prosperity Party. NAMA is now with the government. It's part of the government. But uh, uh, Asamino Sege tried to back Amhara hardliners. That is why Amhara hardliners uh, remember him. They pay tribute to him uh, when there is death anniversary programs uh, of uh, Asamino Sege. Clear for you from Lalibala, where Fano fighters took out a rally today, and local youth. Uh, to the cemetery where Samir Sega is buried. Thirdly, viewers, Amhara region of Ethiopia. Uh, East Gojum, Emanuel Town. We know that uh, in Oromia, North Shore Zone, a few days ago, dozens of vehicle drivers, uh, truck drivers, were abducted by unknown attackers. Locals accused fighters of the Oromo Liberation Army that Ola fighters had kidnapped uh, 
uh, drivers who were on their way uh, to Romia, to Addis Ababa uh, from Amhara region. The armed abductors demanded a ransom of 50 million Ethiopian birds. Uh, the drivers could not be recovered, could not be released. Uh, and now reportedly people are collecting money. Because families, relatives of truck drivers are poor. They are not in a position to pay ransom. So that is why a fund collection campaign is ongoing in East uh, Gujum zone. A manual town, other towns, people are collecting money on their own to give as ransom to the abductors. Where is the government? Where is Ethiopian National Defense Force? Where is Amhara police? Where is Amhara government? By the way, armed groups in Oromia uh, managed to uh, get ransom in the past too. Ola fighters were accused of having abducted uh, factory workers, cement factory workers, sugar factory workers, were kidnapped for ransom and the ransom had to be paid. I don't know which group is involved here but it seems that uh, security forces are unable to do something. That is why people on their own collecting ransom to pay to abductors. Last year's Eritrea. Arati refugees in Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital, are being taken to an unknown location. Since yesterday, we have been seeing videos showing several buses carrying Arati refugees, uh, refugees being rounded up and then be taken to unknown location. Uh, Arati refugees uh, advocacy groups say that refugees could be sent back to Eritrea. Uh, we don't know, but. Uh, uh, refugees in Addis Ababa are rounded up because sometimes they leave camps, different camps in Afar, in uh, Amhara and they try to enter uh, the capital city from where they are arrested and they, then they are uh, relocated, uh, they are sent back to the camps from where they are. It happens and now we know that uh, uh, refugees are entering Ethiopia from Sudan as well. So that is why those who are illegally residing in Addis Ababa could be targeted. Uh, let's hope they are not being returned to Eritrea. If their return to Eritrea is confirmed, it would be uh, unfortunate because they fled Eritrea. Uh, they want to be in Ethiopia or they want to be on their way uh, from Ethiopia to some other location. So they have right to be protected by uh, Ethiopian government. Ethiopian government departments are accused that they delay uh, issuing of documents which these refugees need for their travel to western countries, Europe, so in some cases the registration is delayed. Several uh, issues being faced by refugees in Ethiopia. Two small videos for you being shared since yesterday showing some buses carrying Eritrean refugees in Addis Ababa to an unknown location. Take watch. I don't want to go. I don't want to go.